Namaste everyone. In this video, I am going to talk of the uses of Ashtakvarga in marriage. So first and foremost, I am pretty sure that you people are aware about what is Ashtakvarga and different components of it. Binna Ashtakvarga, Sarva Ashtakvarga, etc. If you are not, then make sure to check out my two earlier videos of Ashtakvarga on Ashtakvarga that I have done with a set of students uploaded some six, seven months earlier. So primarily speaking, the uses of Ashtakvarga is huge. Ashtakvarga in itself is a system. It is not a technique. It is not a supportive technique. It in itself is a system. First of all, talking of few techniques, what I have found, though it is generally considered that in Bhinna Ashtakvarga, which is separate for every planet, there are points distributed to every house. Minimum point being zero, maximum point being eight. The half is four. So Rashi having four or less than four Ashtakvarga points are considered bad. And Rashi is having four or more than four Ashtakvarga points are considered good. Whereas the four is little bit good and little bit bad. Now, what is good and what is bad for that? You have to decide the four. You have to see which are the four planets which are giving the points. Things are signified by those planets as per their natural signification and as per their house's lordship will be good. To do that, you will have to check Prastar Ashtakvarga of the planet. That you can simply do using the Jagannath Hora software. When you open Jagannath Hora, you get a screen like this. And here you see Ashtakvarga. Now, if I have to see which are the four planets giving point in fourth house to sun, I can just right click here and can select so PAV Prastar Ashtakvarga of sun. Here I find sun, moon, Mars and ascendant are giving four points in the fourth house where the sun is situated in. That basically means sun is good for sun related matters. That is, that means sun is good for a relationship with father and authority. Sun is good for Mars related matters. That means sun is good for rulership. Sun is good for moon related matters. That means sun is good for spirituality. And finally, ascendant is also giving point as you can see AS. That means sun is good for giving health to this person. This is how the four points should be decided. Now, according to my research, what I have found out that if any Rashi is having, if any planet, so what do we basically do? We check the position of planet, the where the planet is situated in horoscope and that house in the Bhinnashtakvarga of the planet, how much point it is getting. So for an example, you can see here, I am talking of Venus. Venus is situated in the fourth house. And if you see right here in the Ashtakvarga of Venus, the fourth house position is highlighted in dark gray where you see three. That means Venus is getting three points. So there is a total of eight points. Three point basically means there are three good points and there are five bad points. Now, basically what I have seen the Rashi where Venus is situated in. If that Rashi is having more than four points, it does not only mean good result, but it also means enjoyment. Enjoyment related to Venus. Whereas the Rashi where Venus is situated in, if it is having four or less than four points, it means no enjoyment related to Venus. Surprisingly, what I have found that if Venus is situated in a Rashi having four or less than four points in the Binnashtakvarga of Venus itself, it generally makes the person loyal who sticks to one spouse only. That does not mean he cannot get more than one, more than one marriage. He can have multiple marriages also, but for the time being, when they are in relationship with someone, they are devoted to the person. Whereas Venus situated in a Rashi, which is getting more than four points in the Ashtakvarga of Venus generally indicates someone who enjoys a lot of Venus who enjoys much company of people from opposite gender, which generally indicates person being disloyal and person enjoying a lot of Venus related things, sexuality, etc. This is very surprising, but this I have found to be working in my experience. Going further, 
talking of rashi rashi is that what is called a rashi the rashi the sign where moon is situated in a horoscope is known as the birth rashi of the native according to the principle of ashtavarga it is advised that if you early morning if you see face of a person who is having good point who is born in a rashi which is having good point in the bin ashtavarga of your moons ashtavarga then that day will be beneficial for you now basically when you get married you see the face of your spouse day in and day out probably the first face that you will see in the morning will be of your spouse for the spouse to be lucky for you for the spouse to bring you fortune good results etc the ascendant sign and the moon sign either of them is good both of them is very good none of them is bad so either the ascendant sign or the moon sign of your spouse should be having four or more than four points in the vinnashtaka varga of moon in your horoscope so taking this example chart if you see here the vinnashtaka varga of moon this is basically a virgo ascendant here is the vinnashtaka varga of moon and you see in the sign libra virgo being the ascendant right virgo is the ascendant right in the sign libra in the sign of uh, aquarius in the sign of pisces in the sign of gemini right i am seeing this uh, moon vinnashtaka varga with respect to ascendant so basically speaking in the if the spouse is having their ascendant just a second yeah yeah let's do this chat so you are look we should look at the ashtanga varga of moon now you see ascendant is having six point which is virgo sixth house is having six point that is aquarius seventh house is having six point this is pisces tenth house is having six point that is gemini so basically meaning a spouse which is having gemini virgo aquarius or pisces as the birth rashi and ascendant will be beneficial for the native marrying such a person getting married to such a spouse will be good for the native will be fortunate for the native after marriage he will prosper and specifically as i have always been saying this prosperity etc comes when one listens to the advice of their spouse when one listens to what their spouse is saying and other than that as it is common with every human you have to respect your spouse you have to listen to them and all these common things you will have to do once done the success of the native no one can stop that's the first point secondarily going by the system of ashtavarga generally it is believed that if the lagna this i am talking about sarva ashtaka varga so what happens in sarva ashtaka varga bhinna ashtaka varga of all the eight planets sun moon mars mercury jupiter venus saturn and ascendant the bhinna ashtaka varga of all the planets are taken and combined into one to make sarva ashtaka varga in the sarva ashtaka varga one should compare the points between ascendant and the seventh house if the seventh house is having more points than the ascendant in that particular scenario wife or spouse is the decision maker in the home whereas if ascendant is having the having more points you are the decision maker in the home generally people believe that if seventh house is having 
more points in ashtaka varga as compared to the ascendant in the sarva ashtaka varga this is bad for marriage which i haven't found to be true in my experience but however there is one point in the horoscope of husband <clears throat> ascendant is having more point than the seventh house that means the native will be the ruler of the family in the horoscope of the spouse also ascendant is having more points as compared to the seventh house that means spouse will be the ruler of the family now in this couple what will be there there will be a tussle of power because one is not able to give up to the decisions of others they will always be fighting and there will not be a single opinion in their discussions that can be an issue to exemplify it for those who haven't understood it you can see the horoscope right here here you can see ascendant is having 29 points and seventh house is having 24 points that means ascendant is having more points seventh house is having less points that basically means this native should be ruler this native should be having a very strong desire to rule his family to be the person to whom everyone listens will want to rule over his spouse this is what it means sav means sarva ashtaka varga here right now secondarily the seventh lord is very important seventh lord talks about marriage so basically you have to see the sign occupied by the seventh lord and as i have told you the rashi is having more than 4 points indicate good result the rashi is having less than 4 points indicate bad result so basically speaking you have to check who is the seventh lord then you go to the bhinna ashtaka varga of the seventh lord and check the rashi where the seventh lord is situated in if that rashi is having more than 4 points then the marriage is good otherwise not this is a very simple technique yet very profound and very useful for an example in this horoscope seventh lord is jupiter situated in the seventh house itself you go to the ashtaka varga of jupiter where you see the seventh house where jupiter is situated in is highlighted in dark gray and it is having six point which is more than four because it is more than four it indicates that this person is supposed to have a good marriage this you can say without any doubt but according to my research there have to be a cross checking also so you have to see the position of the rashi where the seventh lord is situated in in the bhinna ashtaka varga of the significator of marriage also so significator of marriage is venus whose bhinna ashtaka varga is this now in the bhinna ashtaka varga of venus you see jupiter is situated in the 7th house you see how much point venus is giving to the 7th house venus is giving 4 point to the 7th house which is so so okay okay now the basic point is the spouse is a person you have a marriage you can have your own concept of marriage some people think spouse should support them some people think spouse should not interfere in their matters some people think spouse is the one who helps you make financial decisions some people think spouse is the one who supports you in your bad times so your concept of spouse can be altogether different how much your spouse is excelling at your expectations is seen through the bin ashtaka varga of the seventh lord that we have seen earlier but talking about the normal concept of marriage sexual relationship mental likings towards each other and all these things which are a part and parcel of marriage how much that is being met if you wanted to see that you should see the rashi where the seventh lord is situated in in the bhinna ashtaka varga of venus that we are doing right here we have seen that the seventh lord is jupiter which is situated in the seventh house and in the bhinna ashtaka varga of venus the seventh house is having four points of that means there is so so result there is 50 50 result that means some days 15 days a month they will have a satisfactory sexual relationship 15 days of a month they will have a non satisfactory sexual relationship now because we are seeing the horoscope of one person we are talking of what this person is experiencing you can see the horoscope of their spouse also 
to see what they are experiencing. If they both are having a problem, it is a real problem. If they both are having happiness, it is a real happiness. But if one is having a problem and another is not having a problem, then there are some, then there are problems related to their thinking, their approach, etc. in life, which can be done right. And the problem can be can be elevated just by mere counsel. Another important point that you must have noticed up to this extent while I was talking of the Binnashtaka work of Moon, but still if you haven't, let me tell you openly that if your spouse is born in a moon sign or if your spouse is born into an ascendant, which is having less than four points in the Ashtakvarga of moon, in the Binna Ashtakvarga of moon, then prosperity etc. is not coming into your life after marriage. Right? There is no problem into that as well. Right? You are doing marriage, you are not doing a financial transaction. But still, this is the thing which is given more, more importance by some people. Hence, wanted to discuss about it. Also, talking of the horoscope of the spouse. Now, you see, there is a separate Ashtagvarga for ascendant itself. So to you see, in earlier times, what used to happen, the horoscope is matched based on moon. Because we are talking of likes, dislikes, etc. But according to me, ascendant indicates the likes, dislikes more strongly. Ascendant talks about these things in a detailed manner. Moon will talk about the type of movies you will want to watch. If it is not matching between a couple, one likes horror movie, one likes action movie, it is all okay. You can work with this. But Ascendant, on the other hand, indicates crucial decisions. How you want to manage your finances, how you want to run your family, and all these major decisions are indicated by Ascendant. How you take your how you take these decisions? What is your preference in the matter of these decisions? Is decided by ascendant. So basically, if you want the couple to have the same approach in life, for them to agree on the same decision, it is necessary. Two people who like to eat same type of food, but they don't agree on in which restaurant to eat. Are landing into a problem. Whereas people who go to the who like going to the same restaurant, the couple who like going to the same restaurant, but it's different type of food according to me is all okay in current scenario. And this I have made after this thought I have made after consulting numerous of my clients. So basically speaking, for this support in decision to happen, you have to check the Ashtagvarga of ascendant. Basic point being the ascendant Ashtagvarga. The ascendant of the spouse, the Rashi, where is the ascendant of the spouse is falling. Always remember in the matters of matchmaking, it is Rashi to Rashi. What we are talking about. So you say the spouse is born in Sagittarius ascendant. Now you check how much point Sagittarius is getting in the Binna Ashtagvarga of Ascendant. It is having four points. So if you marry this person, 50% of decisions, you people will say, we both want to do this 50% of the time. You people will not want to do the same thing. So that can be a problem. Basically, what I am saying that for two people to nod to the same decision, for two people to have the same temperament, it is necessary that the ascendant of your spouse, whatever is the ascendant of your spouse, that particular Rashi in the Binnashtagvarga of your ascendant should be having more than four points. Then it is good. In addition to this, there is one more thing in astrology that is Muhurta. Basically, in any event, Muhurta have a 50% 
if you are born with a horoscope which have bad combinations related to marriage what you can do you can do remedy 80% of the remedies are religious in nature now which religion work which religion does not work what is true in religion what is the effect of kali yuga etc is a long long debate whether a religious remedy will work or not that is dependent on experience and experience of people can be subjective astrologically speaking what is the remedy that astrology suggests because astrology is not bounded to one religion astrology is not bounded to one area what is the remedy that astrology suggests the remedy is muhurta so a person who have a bad combination related to marriage the chances of her marriage his marriage being good his marriage being satisfactory after doing remedies is a 50 50 chance but a sure shot chance will be by doing the thing on a good muhurta if you get marry on a good muhurta if you get marry on a good point of time the happiness in marriage is guaranteed no matter how bad the match is provided the fact both people are sane and both people want the marriage to work this is necessary right now in this particular scenario before i talk of muhurta i will also talk of one more thing so 80% of the time what happens in life things start spontaneously the marriage time you can decide but when you people will meet for the first time you cannot you cannot do that in vedic astrology to know the future of anything there are two approaches that you can take you can consult an astrologer can get a prashna done that is done based on the moment when someone asks the question and you can get an answer alternatively what you can do when the event happened you can check the transit at that point of time and if the transit is supportive that indicates it was a good muhurta transit is equal to muhurta the current happening transit of the planet is muhurta only so if the transit is supportive that means you have done this thing in a good muhurta and the chances of this sustaining and the chances of it working is very high so in this particular scenario also both in the case of marriage if you want to marry or in the case of checking the future of the relationship also this can be used what you have to see the muhurta now basically speaking there are many canons for muhurta and the sad part is as much work as it is done on predictive part of astrology that much work is not done on muhurta that's the problematic part however there is much work done i have also done a lot of work so leaving all the canons of muhurta outside because to find a perfect muhurta is quite a difficult task there is the most important muhurta principle very personalized because what happens muhurta is also general one muhurta does not work for all and of course anything which is personalized is better over general right so personalized muhurta is what you should check the basic point is at the time of marriage tribal shuddhi is checked i have talked about it in a previous post before as well at the time of marriage tribal shuddhi should be checked and this tribal shuddhi is the good transit of jupiter good transit of moon and good transit of sun this is what is called tribal shuddhi so basically traditionally there are good houses for sun moon and jupiter to transit and if the sun moon and jupiter are transiting to good houses from the rashi from the moon sign of the boy and the girl they achieve tribal shuddhi and it is okay for them to marry but that's a standard principle the personalized principle is when you are going to marry at that point of time jupiter moon and sun in their respective bin ashtakavaraka charts according to their separate bin ashtakavaraka charts should be transiting through a rashi which is having more than four points if you get married at this point of time this is a good muhurta to get married the sustenance of marriage the enjoyment in marriage are greatly increased the same can be checked for the time when your relationship started also when the person said yes to you or when you said yes to the person you can recreate a horoscope for that point of time note the position for jupiter moon and sun and then check it in your bhinnashtaka varaka if it was a good time if
Jupiter, Moon, and Sun were transiting through Rashi, having more than four points in the respective astrologers. This relationship is going to sustain. This relationship can convert into marriage. This relationship is going to give you very good things. This relationship is very strong. How to do that? I will give you an example. You see the Ashtagvarga of Sun in this chart. <clears throat> in the third house of in the third house of Scorpio. In the fifth house of Capricorn. And in the twelfth house of Leo. Sun is giving good point. Talking of moon, as we have seen earlier, moon is giving good point in the Lagna Virgo itself. In the sixth house, Aquarius. In the seventh house, Pisces. And in the tenth house, Gemini. And Jupiter. If you see the Ashtag Varga of Jupiter, it is giving six point in the Lagna Virgo, so right Virgo. It is giving six point in the sign Sagittarius, so you write Sagittarius. It is giving six point in the fifth house, so fifth house is Capricorn, so write Capricorn. It is giving six point in the seventh house of Pisces, you write Pisces. It is giving six point in the ninth house of Taurus. So you write Taurus also. It is giving five points in the 10th house of Gemini. So let's write Gemini. So basically speaking, a relationship or a marriage when Sun is in Scorpio, Capricorn or Leo. Moon in Virgo, Aquarius, Pisces or Gemini. And Jupiter in Virgo, Gemini, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Pisces or Taurus. A marriage or a relationship that has that have started at this point of time holds very good future, holds very promising future in such marriage and in such relationships, your probability of enjoying, your probability of living happily with the person, your ability to enjoy this event is very high. Hence, to check the future of your relationship, and check the future of your marriage. I highly recommend to use this technique. These are a few of my snippets in the matters of marriage with respect to Ashtakavarga. As I have told you in the starting, Ashtakavarga in itself is a system. It is not a technique, it is a system. But this is rarely understood by people. People use Ashtakavarga as a technique, not as a system, which greatly limits their ability to use it. According to me, Ashtagvarga is the best tool to time things, to predict things under two minutes. It does not need much of an analysis. Just in two minutes, you can quickly predict things with confidence, which will come to pass as well. In January, I am going to do a full-fledged dedicated course on Ashtagvarga, the link for which I will drop in the description section below. In January, I am going to do a six-class course Every class back to back, one class today, one class tomorrow type of six class marathon course in January. Completely dedicated to Ashtakvarga, in which course I will be use, I will be teaching you 50 plus techniques for Ashtakvarga. Out of which more than techn more than 10 techniques will be mine, my own research, not written in any book, not taught by any person, but completely developed by myself from scratch. Not only this. I am also teaching a dasha based on Ashtakavarga, which is completely developed by myself in this particular course. So if you want to know the users of Ashtakavarga into everything, like you have known the users of Ashtakavarga in marriage, you want to learn Ashtakavarga in depth, you want to learn astrology, either for personal users or for professional users, I highly recommend you joining the course to know more about the course. I will drop the link in the description section below. Thank you for watching the video.